have you ever <laughs> felt you being burnt out as a nurse or nurse practitioner and, and how did that feel for you and what helped you get past? Yeah, so I think I experienced, or I know, I know now to be true, I experienced probably a lot of burnout um, as a nurse practitioner. Until I moved into academia, like I truly did not know what I was missing out on in my life because when I worked for the heart failure transplant team, I mean, it was nothing to be there like 12 or 14 hours a day. We were the ones that carried the pager. So if you had the pager when a heart came in, I can't tell you how many times I like drove the 30 or 40 minutes home, the pager would go off. I was on call for the heart and I'd have to turn around <laughs> and drive right back to the hospital. And, you know, at the time, I just thought, like, this is so amazing. Like, this heart is coming. This child's going to live. And it was all those things. I never took the time, you know, because putting the family, the patient first, work first, never took the time to see what it was doing to me. And when I took that step into academia and had that freedom, I actually got to work from home and I didn't have to be on that strict schedule. So many, my eyes were just like, why? Like, wide open. Like, oh my gosh, like I have more time with my husband. I can go do things with my friends. I used to not be able to do. Um, I don't have to run out of family events. I get to sleep longer. Wow. That was like a huge one. I, I didn't realize how I was not rested at all. And I was eating like garbage. You know what I mean? And when we did have free time, I was like having drinks with friends. And I mean, it was just like a whole reset for me. So I started volunteering. I like started doing all the things that I knew would really fuel me that I'd been wanting to do for a long time. So I started working out, volunteering. Um, and that's why I was so mad at myself when I hit burnout again in academia. And that's when I knew it was a deeper issue of how do I change my boundaries? How do I, how can I tell people in a nice way that honors me and honors them? No. And, and it really is a no. And the more I learned about my human design, I'm actually, it's, it's going to be harder with my design to tell people no, unless I make a conscious effort um, to do it. And so that's really helped me in forming better boundaries for myself. And that's why I feel like burnout isn't like a one, like one protocol fits all, right? Or one algorithm, if we get into the hospital lingo, fits all for nurses or healthcare providers. Avoiding burnout is going to be highly individualized and look so different for each person. And so we're really missing the mark by not doing that for our nurses right now you know, and getting to the root for them, what's going to fuel them and make them feel better so that we have nurses at the bedside for a long time. I mean, it's great that we can reinvent ourselves and pivot, but we don't want all of us to pivot because when I get sick, I want to know <laughs> there's some excellent nurses at the hospital that will care for me and my family. And the, the root cause of this, they're trying to uh, hide the root cause with some snacks and some food to be yeah. honest. And, yeah. and you also mentioned previously, you were talking about nurses as healers. It'd be amazing if we could tap into that spiritual side, but instead we're only healers of the mechanical body. We're too stressed out, too burnt out. We don't have enough time to create meaningful connections with our patients in order to be true healers at a holistic level. Mm -hmm. And I know this is controversial too, but we talked about with another podcaster how imagine if nurses didn't have to do those specific ADL tasks and they could focus more centrally on the human body, the patient, how they're feeling and experiences because... Mm -hmm. We have the background to cr to help with mental health and do all these things. We just don't have the task. Like how often do you exactly. throw away education to the side sometimes because right. you got to handle shit that's priority in your shift. Right. And you're never, the patient exactly. never, is never getting the 100% hospital experience you could say because never. we probably ballpark like 80, 90% because we always lack something just because either the, the workloads are high or the patient ratios aren't there or we're just super busy. Yeah. And it, even with COVID, uh, we, we go in there less frequently. The human touch gets lost. And I actually had a massage two weeks mm -hmm. ago. And uh, the masseuse told me, you know, what's crazy is I know when people haven't been touched in a while or when or she, mm -hmm. she knows that the body feels lonely. Mm -hmm. And it's so wild to express. And we're only going deeper into that hole of the mental health crisis. Right. If you want to watch or listen to our latest episode, you can check us out on Apple, Spotify, or watch us on YouTube.